Hi there, a very warm welcome to Coding Techniques again. Today we are going to look into an interesting plugin of Capacitor which is Google Maps. It is recently launched and I am very excited to work with that. I hope you are too excited to work with that. Earlier we have seen how to work with the Google Maps using JavaScript. In my course I have shown that up and with native Cordova plugins you can use the Google Maps but this is another way and there was one more actually of the community plugin of Capacitor there was also a Google Maps but this is something which is official plugin of Capacitor so which is going to be pretty interesting let's dive into this particular video and see what exactly we are going to learn so before getting started I would like to tell you one thing that there is a limited period offer that is going on in my Ionic course which is Running in bestseller right now with Firebase, it is being built where I am teaching you all the latest version stuff and all the queries whichever you are having out there, I am resolving that up, trying to help you as much as I can. So if you haven't enrolled in that course right now, there is another chance for you, get enrolled pretty soon. So with that being said, let's dive into this video right now. So out here I have already created a new project for our Google Maps of Capacitor and out here I have cleared all the things from my home page so that we can design it from the very beginning. Alright, you can do the same out here. Now after doing that up and for creating the project it's pretty simple. Just hit Ionic Start. Once you have installed the Ionic CLI, I hope you have done that up. If you haven't done that up, well the link is there at the top right corner. You can check it out how to install or set up new Ionic project. Alright, so with that being said, let's get started. So out here I will go to capacitor.js.com slash docs and out here let's go to plugins. Inside the plugin, I'll go to the official plugins and out here you can see if I just scroll down you will see Google Maps. So this is a new package which they have launched and I'm going to install it up now. So let me just copy it up and in this particular project I will open another PowerShell. I'll just simply paste it up out here. Alright once that is done I have to run ionic build in order to get the www folder otherwise we won't be able to run the next command which is npx cap sync all right now once that is done i'll simply run this particular command and it is showing you want to share the data i'll hit yes okay what's wrong yes i think it is done it was too quick right so now we are ready to go let's see what do we get out here in the google map of capacitor for the ios this is the permission that we need to pass for the android these are the permissions that we need to pass and this whole thing we have to do out here all right let me do it one by one let me have this particular component into my html out here all right and as you can see it is not showing me an error in your case it's going to show the error why because we have to import this particular thing out here into my module.ts home.module.ts because whichever file or whichever html you are having it up just place it in that particular module where you are using it up all right, so out here I have already placed that up and in the ng module I already have the schema custom element schema. All right, the way that is shown out here. Fine. That is why I'm not getting the error. If you are getting the error, definitely you have to do this stuff. It is pretty mandatory. Otherwise you will face a lot of errors. Moving ahead, we have to do this particular styling also. Let me copy it up and I will paste it home page SCSS out here. All right. So after that is done, what else do we need to do? We need to get the API key in order to work with that. And then this is how we create the map. So at first I'm going to show you how to create the API key in Google map and how to enable the billing part. So just look at it pretty closely. I'll show you that part. Then I'll come back and resume from here itself. So if you're a new user, I'll show you how to create a Google map key. So first we will type Google maps API. I'll click on map JavaScript API where we can see all the overview of map JavaScript API, how to connect it up, what is the use of it, how to integrate that with our applications or website. We will go to get an API key. Now it is shown out here that the Google Maps need a billing account. Okay. And in order to do that, we have to get started with our Google Maps platform. Now out here, the first step is to create a billing account. Then we will create a project, then enable APIs or SDKs, get an API key. That's it. So I'll just sign up with a new account. So you guys can sign up with your Google account. 
Now once I signed in, in order to create a billing account, I'll go to the Google Cloud Console out here. So let's follow it step by step. I'll accept it, continue. So I already have integrated my billing account okay, in my own Google account. So just to show you guys, I have opened up this account. So in this, we can see that in order to get started, we have some free trials like $300 to try Google Cloud. Okay, this is the thing which Google is giving us. I'll click on get started for free. Now again, accept, continue. So you have to set up certain information of yours. So what kind of customer information I'll give as an individual tax information, say unregistered one. For tax status is registered. You can click on re registered and then you have to provide all the information. So if I do that, then I have this one, a GSC number also enabled. Okay. And if I click on unregistered, it goes away. So if you have your PAN number, you can submit it out here. Okay. Then your address line, you can give it your name. You can change it up your city, your all other details. And then finally, once you fill up all the details, then you have to provide a payment option. So out here, you can give your card number. Mostly credit card is most preferable, but still Google also accepts debit card, which can auto deduct. Okay. So after you fill up all this information, you can click on the free trial. So that was the whole setting up process. I think you have already done that. You have integrated your credit card or debit card properly. Now, once your billing details are done, you can see, you can manage your billing account. Okay. I'm coming back to my original account where I've done that. Okay. And after creating your billing account, you can simply go out here and go to API services, APIs and services. Now, if you do not have any account created or project created, you can create a new project from here itself. Okay. I have a lot many projects which are, which I have done. So you can create a new project by going to new project, feeding these details and you're good to go with this. Okay. I'll just click cancel because I have already created a project called Swiggy clone. So once that is done, you can enable the API services which you need to use. I need Maps JavaScript API and it is already enabled for me because I have already enabled it. So this is the list of whole APIs which can be integrated, right? Now I'll click on Manage. Now let's go to the APIs. Okay, let's go back to our APIs. Now I need to create the API key, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'll go to Credentials. And out here, I'll create a credentials API key. I need to create it up. And this is the API key that is generated. And it is giving me a warning to restrict the API key, which I'm using right now. Okay. So I'll restrict it up. This is the procedure to restrict the API key. So right now, I won't restrict anything. Now, as you can see, this API key is generated. I'll just copy it up okay and use it in our application but remember one thing please do not use my API key because this won't be used in your system as you can see now I have not restricted but I'll restrict it so that you won't be able to use it up okay it will be used only in my application so please get your own API key okay in order to use it in your application now one thing I want to give you a note that when you are integrating your billing account, it might ask you for some amount to be deducted from your debit or credit card. Say like in Indian rupees, it is like one rupee. So just accept that. That is a very minimal charge. They are just checking it out that your account is properly connected or not. Okay. So that is just for verification purpose. So that is just a minimal charge. You can go for it. Okay. All right. So now you have learned how to get a Google Maps API key, how to enable the billing and whole lot of stuff. All right. Now it's time to configure it into our application. So out here in the environment, I have already configured my API key out here, Google Maps API key. And this is the identifier that I've given to that a Google Maps API key. Now it's time to use it up. I'll close it. I have not put it up in. PROD because I'm just showing it 
for the development purpose if you want to go for the actual purpose for the production one you can definitely put it in your production one too now moving ahead in my typescript i'm going to work around with this particular function so let me create a new function initiate or let me call it create map that is a better function name to have now within this i will have this particular thing but i'll just scroll down because out here there is a full example of it how to actually do that up and i'm going to have this particular things at first into my ts file out here i will import all of it update this one also and i'll have this one all pretty easy right now this can be written in one line now it's looking fine now let's create the map so out here this is the code that we need so i'll simply copy this particular code actually it is already showing me a function so i don't need to do anything out here i'll simply replace this function with this one and this environment i have to add it in my imports once that is done this will be google maps api key as you can suggestion it was coming up that's pretty awesome now this center well i will not have in this particular manner in fact i will pass it out here because i want it to be global so i'll pass it of type any which will be equals to this particular lat and long and the latitude and longitude well i'm going to pass let me just open the maps maps.google.com and out here let me search for delhi and this is the lat and long of that so i'll simply copy it up and have it into my code right almost done and it is pasted right now we are ready to go with that we have created the center i'll simply replace this object with this dot center that's it and zooming let me just pass i think 13 might be good let's we'll check that out no need to worry now in the id let me give any id out here capacitor google map any id let's see what it shows right now so let's see it on the screen well this is not showing up because we haven't passed it into our ng on it or anywhere else we have just created the function right so in order to show it up we have to pass it in our ng on it but if i pass it in ng on in it it's going to give me an error let me just show you create map function let's check it now as you can see this error is popping up and why is that so because we should call this particular function after the view is initialized so i'll simply cut this and have it in my ng after view in it in this particular function which is also a life cycle of angular now let's check it out all right i'm still getting the error let me just check it out here okay they have done it in this particular manner not the id they have given the identifier so let me just try that up let me replace all of it now let's check it out all right this is done but still it is not showing up let me just check the css out here what if i change this width to 100 percent all right still we are unable to see the output out here let me just check out here why we are unable to see that because in the styles i have to use capacitor google map okay let me just copy it up and earlier what it was showing to us okay google maps as was missing out there well pretty pathetic sometimes this problem creates a lot of problem for us actually so anyways now i think it will be fine let's check it out so out here as you can see the map is coming up great once the map is coming up i'll change the width first of all to 100 percent because i want to take it to take it the full width now it is fine and for the height also i'll give 100 percent only for the time being you can change it however you like i think 60 vh will be better if you are working in a project and you want half of the size to be taken by the map definitely you can go for 50 vh i think that will be better all right now it is taking the full width we have maps if i click on it i can see the terrain all right and if i click on satellite i'm able to see the labels and other stuff all right so that is how i can change between the map styling or map type i can say fine now what all options do we have well out here we don't have any options but the map is looking pretty nice i think better than our javascript map right now what all things does it provide let's check it out so we have provided out here the id element api key we have provided the configuration we have provided and zooming also we have provided so we, you can change the zooming as per your requirement now after that is done in the full example also nothing has been done apart from that but we can see out here enable cluster disable cluster a lot of functions are there right now the interesting part is let's create a marker it so for creating a marker there is a function called add marker now for adding a marker what i'll do i'll create a function out here i'll name it or let me just directly paste it because i have already created that up you can see out here so i've created this 
add marker which is using the map and adding the marker using the latin long whatever we are going to pass out here it's going to take that up and it's going to pass it in the coordinate and i am passing draggable to true so you can drag the marker and this id let me have this particular mark ID because every marker will have an ID of type string out here. Fine. Now you must be wondering how I got that. Well, let me just go down out here. Well, out here you will be able to see what all properties we can pass in a marker. We have to scroll down. So these are the marker properties which we can apply. You can see out here we have coordinate, we have the opacity also, then you have the title you can pass, a short description of the overlay that you can have out there. For every marker, you can have it out there. Snipe it, you can pass. All right, you can learn the description from here. Is flat, that means you can pass an angle also to a particular marker. So that also you can do. Even you can pass a different icon. You can pass the URL and it's going to work properly. And at last, draggable. So draggable, by default, it is false. I have set it to true. So you can drag the marker. And let's check this out. But we won't see it out here as of now because out here, I have just created this function, but I have to pass it out here in order to look into this particular marker. So this dot add marker. Within that, I'm going to pass this dot center dot let comma this dot center dot lng. All right. Now let's check it out whether it works or not. Now you can see this marker is coming up, right? And I'm able to drag it wherever I want. So that is working pretty nicely. Now what is the next thing that I want to show you? Let me just close this and let's check it out out here. What all other things we can do with this our marker? We can even remove this marker, right? There is a function called remove marker. I know that. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'll have another function called remove marker out here and always use async await out here because we don't want any promise to be done. Now, this is the function for removing a marker. Await this dot new map dot remove marker and we have to pass the ID as so. For the time being, I'm just thinking like I have only one marker. That is why I have just one ID. Otherwise, I have to pass an array of IDs out here. All right. So this is how we can remove a marker. And if you want, say like, I will show you a few stuff. How we can use a remove marker. You can have few listener also out here. So let's check the listeners. Set on my location, click listener. That means your location. Whenever it gets that up, it will do that up. But I don't know how it can be used because there is no such listener to be used because there is no location thing which is getting triggered. Or I'll just check this out. Then we have okay my location button click listener so there should be a button for that but i cannot see any button out here so we will check that out also we'll see whether it works or not set on marker click listener so whenever i click on the marker it will listen to that let's check this one out and but before that let's see all that stuff set on map click listener so whenever you click on the map we can check that also info window click listener so whenever you click on the pop-up box i think you will get somewhere say like i click out here this type of stuff if i click on it it will get triggered there are a lot of stuff actually which you can look into but let's see one by one what all thing we can do and also out here you can use camera also for live preview okay and you can enable the location also so let me just check the main main ones i'll just show you that up all right, so let me first use the listeners out here. So for that, I will paste some code out here. You just check this out. So this is a function for adding the listeners and out here, I'm looking for set on marker click listener. Even if it is getting triggered, I will have a console out here as of now because on marker click, either you can marker or you can do any kind of a stuff which you want. Fine. Now out here. Okay. Let me do one more thing out here. I'll simply pass ID, which will be an optional one. If this dot ID, if ID is present, then I will simply pass the ID. Otherwise, I will pass this dot marker. All right. Because out here i will be getting marker id also so you click on that particular marker you will get that id and you can remove that up so that is what you can do out here direct then out here there is another click event called set on map click listener i'm having that up and i'm adding the marker out fine now in order to add that marker i have to remove the other marker also if needed so we'll check that out no need to worry then out on my location button click listener also i'm adding the marker i'm passing the event dot latitude comma event dot longitude out here also that i'll be 
navigating out here that is why i passed so we will check each and every one out here uh, let me just pass some identifier so that we can track where from it is coming so let me just pass the function here copy it up paste it out here paste it out here and in fact out here also i'm going to paste it up let me copy the function name place everywhere with their res with their respective function name fine all right i think this is done we are good to go let's check this out now so out here i'll go to the application and if i click on some other location i'm clicking on the map do i get some no cause well again i'm making a mistake because this add listeners i have to call it somewhere right i have just created the function i have to call it after the marker is initialized so this dot add listeners and i will pass everything within the try catch block because if there is any error in creating the map then we should trigger the error in our catch all right so in this particular manner i'm going to have everything and i will log the error that's it now it is fine now let's check it out i'll click anywhere in the map you can see another marker is coming up i'll click out here out here out here so so a lot of them are created right and with each and every one you can see set on map click listener it is being triggered and out here i am getting the map id fine and with that i'm also getting the latitude and longitude which you can see out in this particular manner correct now if i click on the marker i have clicked on the marker you can see the function name is changed set on marker click listener where i'm getting the ma map id the marker id also i'm getting and with that i'm getting the latitude and longitude sniper title if there is any title out there you can pass the title also directly into the code out here you can pass the title even if you want dynamic you can pass it out here and out here you can have title in this particular manner fine so i don't want that as of now so i'll simply comment that up now one more interesting thing i want to show you so let's do it one by one the first one i want to show you like whenever i'm clicking on the map i want the earlier marker to be removed and the new marker to show up out there and for that i will have out here if this dot marker id exists then i'll simply remove the earlier marker so this dot remove marker and i will not pass the id because that id will be done by default out here right let's check it out now so i'll click out here and this marker should be removed which you can see it is removed and it is showing out here again remove showing out here 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 and we can see the box also in some places so this is how it is working right now instead of that say you want to do let me comment this line up and this time what i'll do i don't want to remove the earlier marker in fact i want to remove that marker on which i'm clicking all right so what i'll do set on marker click listener so out here if i click on it i'm simply going to remove this particular marker this dot remove marker and i'm going to pass this id out here so event dot marker id i'll be getting out here that is what i'm passing out here let's check it out whether that works or not so i'll have few markers at first i'll remove it fine now i'll click on this particular marker let's see whether it gets removed or not it is removed again removed 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 rem and this one is also removed i have no marker if i click on out here i'm getting a new marker so that is also you can play around if you want all right so this is a pretty interesting stuff you can work with because i'm not getting any functionality for drag listener out here i have i have searched out here but i could not find any drag listener so i'm i'm unable to do anything of that kind out here all right so that is why i'm not doing that up now let's look for some other functionality let's see what all extra things we can play around out here now there is a function called set padding but i have tried it up i don't think it is working properly let me just show you up so in this set padding well in the map padding let me click on it you get this kind of proper top left bottom right right so these are the properties which you can apply out there let me just show you by doing it out here in the create map for the marker is being placed let me have this particular function so await this dot new map dot set padding because this is a promise that's going to return a promise all right and out here i'm having this particular thing and within that i'm passing this particular property but as you can see i don't think there will be any change out here i don't see any change right if i just increase it to 50 50 still i don't think i see any change out here if i just comment this too okay i need to have that up let me have right to be zero bottom to be zero well still it is hard to identify any difference in it maybe a difference i think this is towards the right side we let me give it 
from the left hundred no i don't see any difference all right so you can just try this thing out i don't feel any difference out here so i cannot com comment anything on that so i'm just commenting that up you can work around on that if you want now what else this is showing out here let's check it out now there is a map type also but if i use that up well it is creating a problem it is just not showing me the map let me just show you up out here Avid dot new map dot set map type this is the function that we need to use and within that i have to pass this map type which is an enum i'll just show you map type dot you can see all the functionality is showing up all the properties all the hybrid none normal let me have the satellite view now you can see it is disappeared it is not showing up and what is that this is the thing which we can use this is an enum map type so i don't know why that is not working but if i remove that up it's going to work if you know the reason please do let me know in the comment section now let's check on few other stuff well there is a camera option out here let me just scroll to the top so out here we can also have diff lot of markers together you can add it up fine if i click on it you can add the markers in an array all right that is one of the things then you can remove the markers all together by passing a string array of ids out here so what if i have this let me just create another function out here for adding markers now here i'll be having add markers so within this i have to pass an array so this will be cut i'll cut it and i'll have an array at first and within that i cannot have this particular single id i'll remove it and out here i'm going to pass the first object similarly i can have another object out here copy it up i'll paste it once again let me change this to some other value what value i can pass out here is search on the maps only so let's check nearby somewhere i right? okay fine let me copy it up and let me pass it out here cut it paste it out here that's it i two are different right all right let's go for that so still i see a single marker that's because i think i'm still using add markers all right i move that up and you can even have different letting or even the array also for that pass add markers instead of add marker and let's check it out all right where is that marker see that up even you can scroll okay i just created marker. let me reload it up one you can even zoom in this particular manner by using your cursor all right look at this there you go this is our second marker far away from each other and this design is awesome pretty nice the transitions are pretty good actually if you want a satellite view click on this one and you get a satellite view out here so i'll just zoom in now as you can see this drag event is not getting triggered because there is no such listener out here anyways uh i think i've shown you how to add different types of markers you can pass different ids out here if you want to remove this marker click on this particular marker and it is removed right so everything is working nicely as of now so let's check few other functionalities out here now out here we have some other options like enable clustering and one more function was there called yeah enable traffic layer so out here as of now we don't see any traffic but let's check it now i'll just add few more lines out here await this dot new map dot enable traffic layer and i have to set it as true then it's going to work let's check it now now you can see the lines right where the traffic is more where the traffic is less it is showing up that's pretty awesome what else can we do let me go for enable location is also there let me just try it out so in my code i'm going to use this enable location in this particular manner this dot new map dot enable location i'm setting it to true so it will take my current location and now you can see it is giving me an error why because the location is disabled out here i have to allow that up in order for it to get my location i've enabled it up and if i reload it up now as you can see it took some time so out here you can see my location is showing up while i'm giving a nearby location not the exact location out here so this is what it is showing up right now so i cannot have a marker out here directly because it is not getting triggered all this function because there is promise value that it is returning to me out here if i just keep it a promise also if you just hover on it, it the promise it is giving a void that means it won't give you the location so if you even if you're getting the location you cannot put your marker out there the only way possible is that you have to get the current location from somewhere else and only you can pass it out because there is no listener right for that so these things can be improved once you have all these listeners ready to go now there is a camera thing also which is present out here let's check it out how we can use it up so out here set let me find set 
camera okay this is already shown out here this is how we should be using so move the map programmatically okay so i think mostly this camera is being used for live preview at this point so what if i have this set camera let me just do it in my code out here after this eat map let me have it out here let me enable it up or uncomment it up fine now out here i have already given few properties coordinate this dot center dot led this dot center dot lng and animate to true there are a few properties which you can see out here if you just go for it set camera map sure if i click on it and in here camera config i'll click on it you can see all these things we can pass out there even you can change the angle also 0 to 45 degree between that you can pass the camera angle. so configure properties for a google map cam that is what it is having out there so what if i change the latitude and longitude let's check it out what happens if we do that up so instead of this one if i have this particular let long let's see what happens all right let's check it out is there any change in that or not okay so i'm into which location right let me click on it all right i'm into the set camera map location i suppose so this is the one that is getting triggered not this one this location i can change it programmatically yes i can even move this map to this particular location all right so that is what you can do but i'll keep it in the same location only to avoid any problem fine just the way it is shown out here i'll do it in the same manner now let's check few other functionalities i think there was some enable clustering one also let's check this out i'll just have this function out here await enable clustering just have this in a proper manner all right so what it's going to do enable marker clustering let's check it out i have two markers out here which i have already added there it is, there it is. so let's check it out how the clustering is appearing i don't see any clustering out here well i don't know how it actually works i have tried that up, but i okay i'm just scrolling and this is happening but i'm not sure whether because of the cluster okay there is a circle out here which is being formed is it because of this particular clustering let's check it out if i just remove this this, then what is happening now if i just know this circle was from earlier on so i am not sure what exactly this enable okay i'm sorry i just removed this particular code i have to remove this one now let's check it out i'll just scroll and scroll no there is no such clustering i could see out it's the same effect right i could not see any different effect out here all right so how do we check this out so this is another function which you can have but i'm not sure how the functionality of it actually works there is no proper thing that is given out here even we can have indoor mapping also but i don't think it works in the browser it will work in the android and ios so there are a lot of functionalities but the main functionalities of the marker i have already shown you up out there and how you can set your marker to a different location that is also i have shown out there wherever you have the latitude and longitude you can play around with that even with the current location also but you in the current location out here we don't get latitude and longitude that's the problem if that gets triggered definitely you can work around with that also but nothing is shown out here in this documentation so we have to wait for a while i think to have more functionalities out here then i think we can use this up as of now i think javascript map is fine and there is something they are showing up for macbook m1 okay the google maps sdk currently does not support running on simulators using the macbook m1 based macbook so what it is saying is if you're running on simulators then from macbook m1 you won't be able to do that drop you have to run it in your physical devices then it's going to work pretty nicely all right so these are the permissions for android and ios i think you can check that up but this is the whole stuff which i have tested and it is working fine the things that i have doubt i have already told you about it so if you want to work more on that you can do your own research let me also know in the comment section out there so this is a new package which is just launched so i thought of making a video on that i hope you like this video and i tried my level best to show you the features of it and how to make it more dynamic out here i have tried that up all right and you can have this in a particular component also i think that will be better so that you can use it wherever you want but you need to remember this particular module thing fine so with this i will wrap this video out here i hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button do subscribe to the channel if you're new out here and have a look at different playlists which i have already built for food delivery applications for other kinds of application just check that out in my channel so keep learning and enjoy the day thank you very much for watching see you next time